Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm your host, Dave Stevens. I know, did you miss me? I wasn't here last week, but somebody else was. Rochelle Monsilugan. Monsilugan? Monsilugan. Okay, you say that from now on. Uh, this is my guest uh, host today. She's from the Hawaii Advanced Technology yes. Society, HATS. And mm -hmm. we're going to be making uh, some recommendations for cybersecurity education, because most people think you just go get some formal education, right. some training, you read a book, you take a test, and you jump into a job. It's not really how it goes, is it? Nope, not yeah, at it's all. Not. Well, let's, <laughs> let's review why we should actually have some cybersecurity education. Let's just jump right into it. We have some slides here. Okay. Let's look at some stats. <laughs> Slide one. Uh, this is some information that you need to know about um, how many people were employed in cybersecurity and mm -hmm. how many open positions there were way back a couple of years ago and what we projected to be by 2021, half a million unfilled cybersecurity positions in 3.5 million openings in the United States. That's wow. massive and yeah. we're already running behind and every year we get farther and farther behind, so we're trying to train those people to get them into those positions. And it's a tough haul. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see the next slide. Okay, businesses should care, and it's all about the bottom line. In 2015, we lost $3 trillion worldwide, $3 trillion. That's some serious coin, especially when I'm worried about paying the mortgage every month. So right. that's like a lot more zeros than I'm usually used to. And the world lost that much money. Look at by 2021. Six, Six trillion, trillion wow. dollars. That's, that's a lot. trillion with a T. <laughs> that, that's staggering. And look at all the different ways you can lose your, your money from embezzlement mm -hmm. to theft, uh, reputational harm. Fines are a big one, and a right. lot of people don't discuss fines. So if you're a small business, you accept credit cards, and someone exfills your data, they, they steal your credit card numbers. Right. There's a fine for that, right? Right. And it's like 75 cents per card number. So you can easily get a $4 million mm -hmm. fine, and there goes your small business, Yes. right? And then you're underwater and you'll never have another business. Let's take Bankrupt. a look at the next slide. Okay, why shouldn't the government and its citizens care? Well, obviously, did you vote? Yes, I did. Are you gonna vote in the midterms? Yes. Do you want your vote to count? Of course. <laughs> well, we might not be counting as votes because people like Russia, like people like Russia, countries yes. like Russia, <laughs> are actually uh, taking away our vote by influencing the elections. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be talking about how they did that okay. with some fake news and Facebook right. stuff in the second <laughs> half of the show. Let's move on now. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. this is a lot of stuff that people forget. Industrial, Industrial. control systems. So I gave the same presentation at the, uh, the Pacific Rim Critical Infrastructure Security Summit last week. Uh, SCADA systems, system control and data acquisition, HMI, human machine inf interface, and HDI, human uh, device interfaces. Those are not controlled right. by regular uh, companies like Microsoft or Apple and people who are interested in cybersecurity like Google. They're controlled by Siemens or all, all these other electronics uh, providers, and their engineers just care about making things work. Right. They don't, they don't realize see. that they could actually get hacked. Right, right. <laughs> and, and they think because they're air-gapped, because they're separated from mm -hmm. computer, computer networks, that they won't ever be hacked. Yep. But you can hack that. Yes, you can. <laughs> How would you hack it? Mm. Flash drive? Could be. Update? Yep. Okay. <laughs> People walk in with the computers and plug in? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I love the quote at the end there. Uh, there are only nine meals between mankind and anarchy. That was a writer. Uh, uh, Alfred Lewis way back in the beginning of the 20th century said that and I put that on there because if you hack industrial control systems like uh, SCADA systems you can cause damage and shut down an entire economy. I mean what we'd be shutting down water and power and and the grocery store and the Uber rides and you know we devolve Everything, into right? you know 1700s society and nobody has a horse and a buggy and no one knows how to even make a chair. Mm -hmm. How do you make a chair? <laughs> I can't make a chair. Uh, so we take away uh, like IKEA and we all just go <laughs> mad. And that's why it's important that we we have cybersecurity mm -hmm. in industrial control systems because we want to keep getting our water. Right. And I'd like my toilet to keep taking the sewage <laughs> away from. The house, right? Okay, let's see the next slide. Okay, don't stand still. No problem can be solved 
from the same level of consciousness that created, that's Albert Einstein. And it means that if you stop learning, new problems will still arrive every day, mm -hmm. but you cannot solve those problems, right? So these are my recommendations in, in enforcing a cybersecurity framework like NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technologies, uh, 800-171, that's for small and medium businesses. Those are recommendations to lock down your physical and cyber and social um, uh, security profile. So your employees are all trained. By the way, we know that 90% of the problem is yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah, so you gotta train the people. Okay, uh, right at the, the, second bullet, the second to last bullet point there, Trek, Kohler, and two other companies in Wisconsin are now sharing their cybersecurity incident mm -hmm. info. They've made a collective so that if one of them gets hit, they tell the other companies so the other oh. companies can be prepared and not get hit. I recommend that companies do they this. I'll do that. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> and also pay attention. InfraGuard, US CERT, look those up. Um, they will send you broadcast emails saying, hey, here's the latest threat. Right. Uh, look for uh, Hidden Cobra, which is, of course, North Korea, which is always doing some crap. Right. Uh, so they're, that's they're like initiative. daily, right? They do that. They they, daily, you. like several times daily. Yeah. And they, they cover in, industrial uh, control systems also. Okay. It's not just, uh, not just uh, the software, but they, they'll go so far as to tell you your Chrome browser needs an update. Mm. You know, the <laughs> Spectre and Meltdown stuff with a lot of browser in there. But it depends if they actually listen though, right? Because I'm pretty sure there's some people that don't really care. Uh, <laughs> <And they don't laughs> there's a lot of people yeah. that don't really care, right? That's what the last it's not on their priority. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's look at the next slide. The next slide is this one. This is what's available right now. We're gonna talk about formalized educational programs. Uh, yeah. The first thing you can do for your employees, and I put some samples down here from our state, but if you're listening from another state or country, there's programs that are equivalents of these out where you live too. Vocational programs, your first stop. Uh, they can train you on specific skills. So if I need a specific skill, Rochelle, you work for the state. What kind of skills would I send a employee out for vocational updates? If, I, if you're running an IT department, what would you need updates on if you sent out uh, people for skill sets? New mm. certifications. Yeah, certifications, probably Security Plus. Security Plus, yeah. so that's the CompTIA. Yes, CompTIA. Uh, CompTIA is also coming out with a couple of new ones, but there's Net Plus, Net plus uh, yes. for networking, and there's uh, the A Plus for basic uh, training. Networking. So, networking, <laughs> yeah. so you can, you can update your skill sets by going to these vocational programs, and they're a one-stop shop. Yep. All right, you just go in there, you get the education, you come out, and you don't have to formalize anything. Now, Rochelle is going to tell us about the certificate programs that we do at the University of Hawaii Community Colleges, because okay. she's got two. Right. You, get the, you get the school oh, yes. and the CA, yeah? <laughs> I forgot about so, that. So tell us about those. <laughs> Actually, I have more than that, I think, because we finish, we have the database, we have website, right? All of that? I don't know. You just, you just stacked the deck. Yes, yeah, so I pretty uh, tell much stacked it. How your I think the only from... one I didn't finish was programming. There, one class I didn't take. That was right. the only one that I was shy of. I think. You can still come back. <laughs> okay. So you got the certificate of, of uh, achievement. Yes. In cybersecurity. Cybersecurity. And you got your associates in information technology. Information technology. Then correct. you moved on to another school. Yes. Right. To University of Hawaii, uh, West Oahu. Right. So West Oahu is one of those four-year campuses that specializes and does stuff that the other campuses, the four-year campuses don't. Maui's a four-year college. Right. Uh, the mothership, uh, UH Manoa, yes. uh, does not do uh, cybersecurity specifically. So you went into the ISA program. Right. Tell us a little bit about the ISA program. So the ISA program, it's more geared to cybersecurity students. So a lot of the classes I've been taking, or I've taken, like, like right now I'm taking a cyber investigation class, project management, because you need to know all those things, not just the cybersecurity, but also the business side, right, to it. So um, a lot of, we learn a lot about like the hands-on, kind of like the tools that you would have to use when you're, if you're gonna be a cyber in cybersecurity. Yeah, this is a broad spectrum yes. of uh, pathways you can Correct. take inside cybersecurity. I yes. don't think a lot of people realize how many choices you can make. You can do forensics. Yes, forensics. And you can sit in front of a monitor watching network traffic all day. <laughs> Which is mind-numbing. Yeah, but some if you like to do it. that. Yeah, uh, if you've got your music, you know, yes. and your headphones, that's fine. If that's your your thing, but there's also management, right? Mm -hmm. So in your in your program, uh, they teach you project management as yes. well, right? So you can manage a team of IT right. people, and I think uh, many people that want to go into management don't realize that 
you really need to know what your people are doing yes. in order to manage those people. Mm -hmm. You need to know what their job is and how hard it is so you know how much they can take, how much right. you know, to expect. And those expectations can be skewed if somebody comes in from another industry and doesn't know cybersecurity. Right. So the degree you're getting gives you that broad spectrum, right? So when you get out there, you can be one of those leaders and you understand what your people are Correct. doing. You understand that. You're more well-rounded, right? Right. So mm -hmm. scanning a network, you, you know it's going to take mm -hmm. a long time. Yes, it will. <laughs> yeah, right? It takes a lot. Well, so you've done that. Yes. We can talk about that, too. Um, let's uh, put that slide, uh, the next slide up. Uh, this is the program that Rochelle is in right now. Mm -hmm. It's a four-year degree. Uh, it's accredited by the NSA as a uh, Center of Academic Excellence in Cybersecurity. Uh, Dr. Matt Chapman's put together this program. Right. There's multiple pathways from all the community college mm -hmm. systems. So if there's anybody in academia on the mainland listening, please do this. This is an exceptional thing to do. Feed your community college students into a four-year university and give them some experience on the way there. Uh, because if we all know, when you walk out of school and you have an education, but you don't have any experience, right. what can you do? Nothing. Nothing, <laughs> right? You just get like some help desk job. So let's talk about some of the things you're doing to attain that experience, that hands-on okay. functional experience. As far right as like now. internships? Yeah, well, from in your entire journey, mm -hmm. let's talk about when you first started Kapiolani Community College. Yes. Kapiolani all the way up gosh. to right now, UH West. Let's talk about some of those things that you and your club do okay. for experience. Okay. So for my experience, I've done two internships with the state. So that's with the CEO, Todd Nakapoy, and then, then with Vince Hong, the CIO of the state. And then now I'm doing another internship with Purple Maya. So that one is more teaching. Purple Maya is? Yeah. It's what? like a nonprofit organization where they teach like more underprivileged kids um, coding, like website development. So at, at like for my, the school that I'm at is a Kapolei High School. So they actually are gonna do some kind of um, project at the end and they're gonna present it. And they were learning all about coding. And it's, it's not like what we learn, like W3 schools, they're doing like bootstrap. bootstrap. <laughs> a little bit so that, harder way. <laughs> that's the JavaScript framework for yes. Twitter that's publicly available that mm -hmm. you can use to enhance your website. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a bunch of JavaScript functions that you can just call. You don't have to rewrite it or right. re reinvent the wheel. So you get good at Bootstrap, and yes. your site can look as good as Twitter, yeah. which is, is kind of <laughs> nice. So you're out of Kapolei High School? Yes. So out by the, the old military base, right? Yeah. That's by the old front gate of uh, Barbers Point. Right. Right, so that's out there with UH West. Yes. That's good. So and then, but with that one, I'm also going to be doing a um, you just start a program with the Boys and Girls Club. So I'm going to be teaching a class in Evo Holly Ono. So this one is just kind of starting. Mm -hmm. So it's like an hour, a class, same thing, web development. And Eva's in the same area? Yes, in the same area. So the opportunities uh, are so numerous. There are, yes. Uh, everywhere mm -hmm. that you can uh, localize Correct. physically, right? Yes. So it, it's not too much of an inconvenience no. to get experience. For me, especially, right? yeah, it's, it's in that area. Right. And then I work on campus. I know UT is about help desk, but I work at, <laughs> <laughs> I just recently started working at the UHIT. Oh, you should so IT help desk. And I, okay, this is something I'm going to say, okay, I, I'm <laughs> okay. not like help desk, but from working there, and I've only been there for about a month, I've learned so many things, and I think anybody starting out in the IT you could benefit should from this? start from it. Yeah? Yes. Well, we all did, <laughs> you know, back in the day, you know, they called it the pit. Yeah, and, you know, and I, when I go on, yeah. like, calls, I get, we get teased about uh, IT. <laughs> they love doing that stuff. That's like nerd stuff for them. And I'm just standing there like, oh my God, this is I'm like right so, here. I yeah, I'm like, I can hear you. <laughs> but we go through that, but I just ignore it. But I mean, <laughs> I've, I really enjoy it. I don't know. Well, you are a nerd. <laughs> yeah, That's I am. That's the way it is. You know, you're I'm one a of closet us. nerd. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to take a break. Right. break. We're going to go pay some bills, come right back. Okay. Stay safe. Hello, everyone. I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii.
Welcome back. We're with the Cyber Underground and Rochelle Manstilungan. Yes. Right? Yes. You okay. Got it. Correct. Okay, good, good. Um, <laughs> we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the things that uh, puts our, our government in danger right now. Okay. And, and we just talked about this the first part of the show. Why should governments care about cybersecurity? And one of the things is, uh, you know, the, the DNC and the RNC have both been hacked. Mm -hmm. And uh, poor Podesta. <laughs> you know, all of these emails out there for everyone to see. Um, but that was caused by a two-letter mistake in an email from the help desk. Mm -hmm. You know, they meant to say it's an illegitimate email, and they left off the IL, oh, and they yeah. said legitimate, so Mr. Podesta put in his password and username, and then they're hacked, they're owned. Mm -hmm. And that social engineering attack was uh, actually massively effective. When I looked at the statistics, only 30 emails went out 29 of them were to people that didn't work for the campaign anymore. So only one campaign member got a bad email, and it worked. Yes. I mean, that, that's effective. Man, I wish I could be that effective with our pen test. I mean, <laughs> we, we need to up our game. These the Russians are good. Uh, they bring the A game to the mix, but they got time and materials. And that, those things aren't really the hacks that can nail us all the time, though. Let's talk right. about what to look out for. And one of the things that I, I think everyone's looking at is social media. Correct. So well, Facebook, Facebook actually presented stuff as news. Mm -hmm. You know, people could post whatever they wanted as an ad and it looked like a news article and could link to a page that right. looked like a news page and people just believed right. it, lock, stock and barrel. And uh, that's disturbing to me. Mm -hmm. What other social media outlets do you watch out for when you're out there? I would say Twitter. Twitter? Especially, but that one you would have to take with a grain of salt because you can't believe everything what people write on there. Right? Uh, I think we're experiencing <laughs> the same thing with the web as we did with print in the yeah. first place way back when. People believe that if it's written in black and white on a, yes. a printed page, that it's true. Yep. And that's it's just not, not the case. Right. If someone's got money, they'll publish it. Yes. And out it goes. And if it's you know rock solid, great. If it's not and just makes money, Oh, that's great right. too, right? And so Facebook thrives on advertising, and when they put this stuff out there, they get more clicks. Right, and well, most people, they just look at the headline, right? They don't really go all the way into the story. I have friends <laughs> like that that do not drill into the story and actually read I was reading, the story, yeah? I was reading a study where they did, like people didn't actually click on the link. They just read the headlines. Yeah, it's <laughs> provocative. Yes. And that changes opinion, yes. which is why so many people, I think, voted the way they did. I think mm -hmm. their opinions were swayed by some reprehensible headlines, especially the one that caused the, a man to take a gun to a pizza parlor, mm -hmm. thinking that the Clintons had captive children in the mm -hmm. basement. Uh, that was way too far. Awesome. Uh, I, I, I cannot believe stuff like this happens, but that's America, and yes. we've just been, I, what is it, acclimated mm -hmm. to social media, so we're reading mm -hmm. that. So, what are some of the tips? You, where, how do you read news? Give us some tips well, on how you would di differentiate. Well, aside from just reading the headline, I actually try. I, I look it up. I use this thing called Snoop. Snoops. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> com to make sure because then most of the time it's not real. Or or I look at the sources. Yeah. You know, because sometimes the website could be totally off. Like how you're saying it brings you to another page. Mm -hmm. It could bring you to some kind of page that's like nothing at all or something, you know, malicious. Sources. So, yes, Let's talk sources. about that. So from an academic approach, mm -hmm. you're in school now. Mm -hmm. So now when you have an intelligent conversation, people expect this in your field. Right. If you were going to make an assertion, make a statement, people want you to support that assertion right. and cite your sources. You know, so if I say, hey, neutrino communication is going to be the wave of the future, someone's going to say, well, how, how do you know? And I'd say, well, in 2009, the University of Illinois did this experiment. Now tell them about the experiment and where to look it up. That's an intelligent conversation. Right. In an, at, a, at an academic level, but I don't, I, I don't see that happening <laughs> after two beers at the bar, yeah. right? It's just you know people start yelling yes. and then it devolves, and but that's that's how I read news, and then I look up multiple sources. Yes. So I'm I don't know about too. your sources. Mine are things like BBC, NPR. Uh, I go to the Washington Post, but then I get the opposite opinion from the LA Times, right? Right, right. which is a conservative rag, and I compare, and they might write it from a different yeah. angle. But you still get the same underlying mm -hmm. facts, and that's what you can go on, right? So tell us a little bit about your experience. What do you do? How do you get to your name? I do the same as you, but because sometimes some of the stories, they kind of turn it around to make it sound like a certain way. 
I've seen the memes yeah. all like that. Uh, what was the one that I just, I couldn't stop laughing. It was uh, one newspaper had a picture of uh, President Obama holding a uh, Pepsi. Yeah. And he was drinking a Pepsi, and it's, uh, President Obama supports Pepsi-Cola. <laughs> and then uh, uh, Fox News, I think, had the headline, if I'm not mistaken, uh, said, President Obama declares war on Coke. <laughs> right? Right. I, wait a minute. <laughs> He's just holding a soft yes. drink. And it, yeah, two completely... And they just blow it out over <laughs> Yeah, right? They just they want the headlines. And yes. I think a lot of people forget that, that that's what that business is there for. Mm -hmm. They have to sell. They have to drive opinions, yes. get clicks, sell magazines, sell subscriptions, and that's how they make their money. And if yeah. they don't have sensationalist headlines... And then they won't have a job. They won't have a job. <laughs> and then, then what do we do? Then we right. have to depend on the state-run media, uh, also known as Fox News. Uh, <laughs> just in case you didn't know, it's Fox News. Okay. <laughs> I, I really ought to do a rant about that. She asked me to do a rant. I'm going to do a rant. Okay, let's talk about um, more, now that we're uh, going away from warning about this fake news, okay. let's talk more about how you have worked with the HATS Club okay. to uh, bring more experiences to the students who are doing cybersecurity. Now, we all know when you, when you walk into your first job, they're going to mm -hmm. ask you, what's your academic experience? Right. What are your certifications? But then, right. what have you done? So let's talk about what are the students doing under so your leadership? So under our leadership, um, they actually we actually do CTF trainings. CTF is the capture the flag. Capture the flag. Yeah. Describe so, that for us. So it's more like it's kind of some more real life, not kind of real life, I guess scenarios where you're like um, solving a puzzle, like doing reverse engineering, um, those type of things. So then you use tools to try and figure out the hidden message. And that's the flag sometimes. Yes, yeah, you that's the flag. Whatever the hint message Correct. is, you can capture that and you get points. Right. And like how we mentioned the last time, I'm going to give another plug, <laughs> the National Cyber League, which registration is open. So we we also compete in that as well. That's going on now. That's the Correct. regular season. Yes. Right? So Preseason's over? No. Actually, this just registration just started on Monday. Okay. So, so we're just starting out. Still and registering. So. How much is that? $25? $25. And now they're just open for high school students. That's amazing. Yes, because they're trying to really um, promote the whole STEM program in schools. So I think that's actually a good thing. So now they're asking us, HATS, to try and mentor students in particular high schools. So um, Meryl Hioki is trying to get that happening, I guess. So he's asking us, would you like to help with that? So There's a lot of apprehension when people yeah. don't know about this. Yes. And they say, oh, National Cyber, I don't know anything. Right. So how, why would I do this? But what, what they don't know is that there's a gym, mm -hmm. where a, like a practice yes. area, right? Tell us about the gym. So like you sign up for this, and then you get access to the gym. Mm -hmm. right? So the gym, you could practice that. That's like throughout the whole competition. So you can practice everything that they will have in the actual season. So there's the open source, there's like the reverse engineering, web, web exploitation. So you can like do things like with Wireshark. There's even cryptography, stenography. Sten stenography. Steganography. Steganography, I guess. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all of that, which I wasn't too good at, but after doing the gym, like I got better. They show you the yes, tools. Yes, they show yeah, you the this, tools. This tool will reverse that hash. Mm -hmm. This tool will break this code. Right. This tool will do this web exploit, uh, yes. web uh, attack or whatever, right? And and Metasploit's in there, mm -hmm. I would assume, yes. and, and Wireshark, Correct. which is a scanning tool. Just so you know, learn Wireshark. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, what else? Uh, so we got the National Cyber League, yes. and if you sign up, you do the gym, mm -hmm. and you practice, and then there's the contest. Uh, how many days is the contest when it starts? Oh, so this, it starts, I believe it starts in April. Mm -hmm. So there's the... Uh, what do they call it? The, so you do the preseason and then the postseason, right? And then there's the individual, and then you do the team competition. So on, as a team, how does that work? Have you ever done the team? Yes, I did the team okay. last semester. How's that work? It was a class that I was taking at Utrecht, which, which I would highly recommend. It's only offered in the fall, but it's, it, it, you teach, you, we all teach each other to, like, our tips and like, how to get through the, the whole NCL. And we had presentations, tools to use, because most of the people in my class were or experience more than I was. So. <clears throat> so did you have to sit in the same room when you competed, or could you be no. in remote location? Oh, yeah, so we were separated in, in groups. Uh -huh. So yeah, so we sat, we were in our classroom, and the other people were in another area. 
So that's the team one. Individualize. You can You're do at this home, from home yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> You're at home. No, you pajamas. can't get any help from anybody else. You're pretty much on your own, and yeah, you have no life. You're just going to be doing that all They don't monitor weekend. you, right? They don't have a camera on no. you. No. Okay. Yeah, no, no camera. Say. <laughs> No help. Okay. No help. Yeah. yeah, right. Right, I'm with you. Like, okay. So let's talk about the, there's another competition, yes. um, the Collegiate Cyber uh, Defense Competition. Yes. The so CCDC. you participated in this? Yes, I, when I was at KCC. So that and, was another class I was taking. Okay. So let's talk about CCDC mm -hmm. and how that works. You don't know how that works. I don't know. I don't. So red team, blue team. So <laughs> yeah, let's red talk team, about blue team. Yes. There's a, the red team is usually attacking team. They right. they exploit things, and then there's a blue team that's the defense yes. team, and that's usually what the students do. You defend. Right. Uh, just so everybody out there in the audience knows, it's a setup. So the blue team it, is just wet. It's actually you get hammered. The red team gets to scan your network days in advance, yes. and they have everything set up. Everything so the is moment they release you to do the attack and defend, the red team's got Metasploit and all the stuff ready to go, and they just press the button, and mm -hmm. you have to defend. You have to do things right. like it's, lock out the administrator password, yes. and do your updates, and. And it's like working at a help desk. Because <laughs> <It's laughs> you, you get phone calls. That's right. That what actually happened in real life, I guess. I don't know about the child being lost. I don't know. <laughs> like, there are some weird scenarios, but. Well, they try to get you to unlock passwords and yes. over the phone, like yes. real help desk. I, the first, and I'll, in our last minute, I'll tell the story because I love this story. <laughs> the, the first CCDC competition we did, uh, I came in with pizzas for lunch, and the judge <laughs> said, hold on, and typed an email to the entire team without me knowing it, and it said, uh, you know, Auntie so-and-so brought in pizza, come on and get pizza. Everybody in the room, the whole team, <laughs> stood up, did not lock themselves out of the computer, and walked out of the room to get pizza. Right. And the red team walked right in. And when they returned with their pizza, they were, they compromised, were compromised and they lost the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, lesson learned, yep. which is why I like the competitions. <laughs> you learn life lessons. Yes, you do. Okay, give us... Your 10-second uh, plug for hats before we go. So we hats, um, if you guys want to join, you, we have a website. It's um, hats808.team slash join. So go on to our website. There's actually a um, sign-up sheet where you just tell, tell us about yourselves, what you're interested in. And we offer, um, like we were saying, the CTF training. There's also um, professional industry, uh, industry professionals that come in to talk, which we're actually going to have one soon. In um, this month, oh, that's for great. pen testing. Oh, so. that's wonderful. And we're actually doing that with UH Manoa, the um, MIS club. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah, so. they're the gray hats. The MIS? No, I don't. No, this, this is, is totally different. different. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of clubs out <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah. Well, everyone's into this. <laughs> yes. Well, thanks for being a guest. <laughs> Thank and you. Thanks everyone for joining us. <laughs> uh, aloha, and we'll see you next week with a really rousing episode. <laughs> and I want you to call in for our next episode. It's 808-374-2014. We're going to need callers because we're going to go where no one's gone before in the show. We're going to ask you what happens if we get a message from space. <laughs> Should we click on that attachment? Follow that link? Uh, well, see you next time. Until then, stay safe. <laughs>